Welcome to the Craft to Career Podcast with Elizabeth Chapel, where every week we dive into how you can turn your craft into a successful career. Get ready to have the career you've always dreamed of. Hello and welcome to episode 62 of the Craft to Career Podcast. I am Elizabeth Chapel, the host of the podcast. And I'm really excited to share a review this week to start off the podcast. This comes from Jam Dallas, who says, Bravo. Jam says, I just listened to your recent episode of your new fabric design and talking about your mother. It's so very nice to hear the openness and vulnerable side come through. I can relate to be able to see the affirmations that, yes, you are doing good by the loved ones you hold dear. Thank you for this platform because I have learned so much from info on real making to soon to be pattern making when that comes available. Thank you. Thank you. So Jam Dallas, thank you so much for your review. And, you know, it's interesting hearing feedback from the episode, the podcast episode where I talked about designing fabric uh, and talking about my mom. So that's episode 60. And I didn't even realize until other people pointed it out how much I was looking for approval from my mom, which is a very interesting thing, even as an adult and she is gone, that that's something that uh, was really important and special to me. Um, so, but beyond that, thank you so much for your, your review. And I love that this podcast has been helpful for you and that you're excited to move forward with your business. And it sounds like you will be joining me this fall for the quilt pattern writing course. So I'm really excited to meet you in the fall. And for those of you who are listening, I do have a mega course in the fall. It's September 6th is when it opens and it's a, a deep dive into how to write and sell your own quilt patterns. However, I do offer a free mini course that talks about Canva using canva.com. It's a free website, free platform, and you can learn to create your own quilt patterns using canva.com. And it's 30 days. You have 30 day access to the course once you sign up. And that is the perfect way to dive into getting started writing your own quilt patterns. So there is a link to that in the show notes or go to quilterscandy.com and look under courses and select the free mini course on Canva and writing quilt patterns. But this week I have a guest who I've known since I started in this industry. It's Jemima Flint of Tied with a Ribbon. She is an Australian quilt pattern designer very talented. Back when I had my box, I included her pattern in the box. She's just got such a fun look. We met at a quilt market years ago, which now that I've done this podcast more and more, I realize how common it is that I've met people at quilt market. So there is something to think about. But Jemima, she reached out. She has been growing her business for years and we chatted a bit about how that's looked and then she also wanted to have a little bit of a coaching call and pick my brain on some ideas for her business and so we do a little bit of that so this is both hearing her journey as a creative entrepreneur and then also talking some coaching and strategy on how to grow her business so let's jump in and let me introduce you to jemima All right, Jemima, thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to have you. For our listeners who who maybe don't know you or don't know all the things that you do, can you tell us a bit about what you do? Sure, Liz. Thank you so much for uh, having me and uh, really excited to chat with you today. So for your listeners who don't know who I am, I am Jemima Flint and I um, am from Tied with a Ribbon and I'm a quilt pattern designer. I'm an author. I'm a teacher, I am a fabric designer and um, just all around love the teaching side of uh, quilting and uh, modern quilting. I love it. So how did you learn to quilt? Where did this start in your life? Really started when my mum had always um, had lots of um, sewing things at home. She always was sewing. My grandma she always there was always so much to do and I used to love going and um, doing lots of crafts and different things with her and uh, the actual quilting side of it started when my baby sister uh, had her room redecorated by mum and there were all these leftover scraps and pieces of fabric and I kind of collected them all up and then just started 
to make my first quilt and um from there it just it really just snowballed it was you know I asked mum to take me to you know find some quilt classes and I was ripping the pages out of the magazines the better homes and gardens with the quilt patterns on them so that I could learn and uh yeah going and uh then finding my local quilt shop and and really sort of just loving the actual yeah quilting so much that it just grew grew from there so you're a true lover at heart I mean it is like something that sounds like consumed your creative mind where you were tearing out pages and just loving it. Yeah, I from from an early age, I'd always been sort of involved in craft and making things, um, and it was just really just something I had always just had a passion for. Uh, learning how to do things and learning how to make uh, from from a young age, and definitely you know something that I saw at home in my family, and you know my mum and um, my aunties as well. So it was just something that was really natural to. To me and um, something that I just lo- you know loved to learn more about. So I'm curious when well okay so you're in Australia and I might be saying the terms wrong when you went to, to college university yeah um, university did, did you what did you want to study what did you picture yourself doing as a for a career? So when I w- left school and went to uni I actually became a primary school teacher and I had decided from a very young age that I wanted to be a primary school teacher and I set that as my goal and I went and did that and I did primary school teaching for a couple of years and then I left primary school teaching vowing never to go back and (laughs) just sort of realising that it wasn't kind of what I think I had just been working so hard towards becoming a primary school teacher that when I got there it just it wasn't all that I wanted it to be. And um, so I left and uh, went out into the workforce for a little while. And uh, when I was out in the workforce, I met a colleague and one day he had said to me, why had I never considered becoming a home ec teacher? And I said, what do you mean a home ec teacher? And he's, well, you love sewing and you love cooking and you love, you know, you've got this teaching degree why don't you do home ec teaching? And I, it was the first time it had ever come across my mind and then I set, set out, I went back to uni, got my next degree so that I could um, become a home ec teacher and then I did that for many years. So I actually was teaching uh, a lot of more the food and technology side uh, to high school students and uh, definitely to more the upper secondary um, level and yeah then yeah one day sort of got pushed into having to teach year nine textiles and um, that was kind of where that passion for quilting reignited for me. Okay so then how did you make the leap how, how did that transition look from being a home ec teacher to what you do now and how long did that transition take? As um, when I had my girls I was sort of back in teaching and I was doing that part-time so I was kind of teaching a couple of days a week and then on the side because I was in had gotten back into quilting I was really enjoying sort of that element and so I started to write patterns on the side and then between teaching I would go to markets with my patterns and my kits and I'd actually sell those at markets and I don't, it was just the teacher in me. I just, I, I loved the, the actual writing of quilt patterns. It just, it made sense to me and it just sort of flowed on from that teaching side of things where I could teach someone through my paper patterns and as things sort of grew, I was kind of doing some more markets and I was getting more excited about um, looking at teaching some classes to, to students uh, in like a nighttime setting and so it just kind of came to the point where I had to really sort of make a choice either I was going to go all in on my business or I was actually going to have to sort of go you know look it's just time for me to head back to the classroom now that the kids were a little bit older and and go back to teaching full time so and I wrestled with that for a little while but um, definitely working and building my own business just, it, it won my heart. And I just just am so passionate about, yeah, what I do and my business and my work. And 
every day I just yeah really enjoy waking up and walking into my studio and and working on my next design. Which it is really scary to take that leap to put all of the responsibility on yourself you know that there is no fallback to well if it doesn't work at least I have this secure income as a teacher but it's also hard to really have success unless you go all in. So I'm curious how long you've been doing this because when I, I'm trying to think of when, when you came on my radar, mm-hmm. I, you know, had the subscription box and you were included in the subscription box. That's right. And featured. And that was what, like 2016, 17? When did you? Yeah. Was, yeah. So I was, I think that we, met, we must have met, first met at Salt Lake City in 2016 okay. at Quilt Market. And okay. I think we'd been in touch earlier and then at Quilt Market, you and I uh, caught up and yeah, so sort of 2016 was really sort of that, that first time I'd ever been to Quilt Market and actually got to put all those, those faces to all the names um, in the industry and people who I had started to meet and, and work with. So yeah, 2016. Okay, yeah. And I really am excited for Quilt Market to be up and running again. It is huge for making connections and growing the business. So also, Craftsy Blue, what is it, Blue something, you recorded with them, is that right? That's right. So that actually came off the back of my first book, uh, which was Weekend Quilting. And um, I actually got to go to Denver in Colorado and um, that was so exciting because that was actually in 2017 and it was just before Quilt Market in St. Louis. So um, on the back of the release of Weekend Quilting, which at the time was uh, with F&W and I believe it's Golden, is it Golden Peak um, in, in Denver uh, who do all the publication or the filming side of things. So that was that was such a buzz and it was such a big highlight being able to get on a plane and travel over to uh to film and um yeah so that was content that would sort of grew from from my first book so yeah really exciting yeah they reached out to you and said we saw this book and we'd love to have you as a teacher on our platform well they were part of the company kind of part of the book company so that was actually sort of they were looking to grow some more teachers um, in the area of um, building film and um, building online classes, and which were a lot lot newer at that stage, and obviously sort of Craftsy was a big competitor um, back then. So yeah, building that side of things. So then, I mean, just between us and all the listeners, um, <laughs> is that still happening? What's happened with Craftsy and all of that? Uh, with Craftsy, I wasn't sort of ever very involved. I think I had one pattern ever on that. Um, the book publication and all that, that's all changed hands and um, that sort of happened the time my second book came out. So I'm not really involved with um, with much of that anymore, but certainly, yeah, definitely it's on my, on my list for things that I'd love to be able to one day get back and uh, be able to do. Yeah, very cool. So I'm curious how how successful has your business been? What what have been the highlights? What's going well? And then what areas are you wanting to grow? Uh, definitely things that have uh, worked really well are collaborations. That's sort of one of the things that I'm I love to do. Definitely connecting with uh, people who I've met online and then and designers and getting to be able to to work with upcoming fabric lines that's always sort of been yeah really really big buzz and it's always a great way to to help get a a new pattern out there so so that's always uh really worked well things like um i get sort of very um into stages where like i've just been working on the back of my third book so the last few months really have just been dedicated to working on that so at at those particular times it's really sort of the book or nothing um or whatever I'm working on um at the time so I'm trying to sort of um definitely grow other areas of my business as well so but yeah definitely you know my patterns um they're they're definitely one of the biggest areas of my business and um I've done fabric designing in the past as well which I know that um, such exciting news for you as well. And um, definitely sort of, yeah, 
having different areas, but you tend to learn what you do and what you love um, about quilting and sort of where, where you want to sort of take your things. Yeah. So are you still designing fabric? It sounded like you said that was more in the past, but are you still designing fabric? It's just been something I've done two collections and I've sort of set that aside at this point um, just because it's something uh, once I was, um, I started then on the book and um, it, when it, it's kind of either a fabric collection or a book and because the time and the, the dedication that you need to sort of set aside to to one or the other is kind of, yeah, working on one and um, and that sort of as much as I can um, dedicate time and, and energy and, and that too. So for me, the past work that I've been doing in the last sort of, yeah, six months has, has definitely been sort of focused on getting book number three out. Well, I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. Who's the publisher for book three? Uh, Fox Chapel. That's right. So yeah. it's the same one that I work with. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So which part of your business, it sounds to me, tell me if I'm right, that the quilt pattern writing has been your most lucrative part of your business? Yeah, definitely. And uh, teaching and sort of traveling for workshops definitely would also be up there as um, one of my main ways in which I sort of, you know, earn my revenue um, and definitely one of those areas that I'm so passionate about because nothing lights me up like being able to head out to a workshop and um, traveling which I've been lucky enough to be able to do in the past and then later this year also heading over to New Zealand to be able to teach um, at the quilt symposium over in New Zealand so very excited about that and that is definitely sort of one of the, the big areas as well so I'm yeah, and you've been a teacher your whole adult career. So that's definitely, you know, a part of your, I don't know, repertoire, the thing that you love. So I am curious, especially for you, if you could speak to the people who live outside of the U.S., what is it like? Does it feel different? I don't know. I guess you don't have anything to compare it to. But can you just speak to, I've had a few people reach out like, I'm in the UK or I'm in Australia. I feel like they, they feel like they might have a, not the upper hand as far as business goes. What What is your experience with that? Definitely it's um, – I've sort of found it's not necessarily a glass ceiling as such, but um, here in, in Australia our, our shows are far more limited. Our distributors um, – uh, there doesn't, there isn't as much reach. Obviously, we don't have as many people out there, and um, so it's kind of a case of uh, I've found that being able to sort of get out there and and my my area of being out my where my audience mostly is is US based, and definitely the people that I work with um, in terms of fabric designers and fabric companies and all that, they're all mostly US-based. So for me, I've kind of just had to embrace um, not only what happens here in Australia, but definitely um, using that to my full advantage. So my actual fabric um, collection and that was actually done through here in Australia. So that was really exciting to be able to work with people here in in Australia um, with two grand zebras and Robert Kaufman together to be able to bring that fabric collection to life. So that's been really good to be able to do that. And then there are other elements of my business where I know that I'll be going straight to someone in the US for um, particular answers or particular work. But then there's also other areas um, like magazine publication work that I do out of the UK. So um, it, it's kind of been one of those things that, and I guess I'm in Perth, so I'm right on the west side of Australia and most of the action already happens on the east coast of Australia. So I guess I've already got that get up and go that I'm going to have to go and chase my dreams and um, whether it be on the, the east coast of Australia or whether it be US-based or in, in the UK. But um Definitely, it's it's what to my advantage. I think, in um, especially when I'm in the US, you know, it's mm-hmm. definitely a point of difference. You know, I think being an Australian quilter and and that definitely stands out when when you're at market or when you're you know delivering things for you know books book signings and all that sort of stuff, or even just yeah, that's that's definitely sort of a little little gem to have in in my pocket. That yeah, I'm an Aussie quilter. I love that. I'm such an advocate for 
the things that could come across as being a disadvantage to <laughs> using it to your advantage and, and to not let your situation dictate your success. You know, I love that you're like, I've just decided I've just got to do this. Like, I'm going to make it work. And, and that it is, I mean, anything that's a little bit different or unique, that's going to make you stand out from everyone else. So you want to stand out. <laughs> you want to, in whatever way you can. So you've got this thing that, I cannot compete with, you know, this accent, this cool location, this intrigue of like, wow, Australia, you know, so. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a great conversation starter when you're over there and uh, definitely there are things like, you know, our, our quilting history is so significantly different to to that of the US and, and other places around the world. So uh, it's definitely a point of, you know, people are interested, you know, they'll, they'll stop me when I'm over there and um, and, and ask, you know, why you know why are there you know lots of what seems to be lots of Aussie quilters coming up and um, you know what what sort of sets them apart so there's definitely some you know amazing amazing Aussie uh, quilters that we have here and um, yeah very excited that um, it, it is a point of difference and it is something to be able to say you know that that one thing that does set you aside in in what is quite a large pond mm-hmm. and I actually didn't know the history was different that's something yeah if you taught a little thing on that, I would be very interested or a, a brief blog post, whatever that might be. But also there is this online world where the world has become much smaller and all of a sudden your audience can be in Timbuktu. And I actually don't know if that's a real location, Timbuktu, <laughs> now that I say it, but, <laughs> but you, you can create a smaller no, how do I say that? Your reach is easier. To, it's easier to reach a larger audience worldwide than it ever has been. So then my next question is, what what areas are you wanting to grow your business? What areas are you like, you know, let's focus on this. I could really blah, 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 you know? Definitely in terms of wanting to, um, two main goals that I've really sort of set myself uh, for, for this year is one, to continue to increase that reach. Uh, worldwide, um, I, I really do want to to grow that as as a big area of my business because you know I've got American publishers and I've got a lot of you know publication work in the US and you know the UK. So definitely increasing um, people knowing about what I do and who I am through you know through Instagram and through through other social media channels is definitely sort of growing that reach is is one one goal and one of the biggest second goals that I've and I've chatted to you a lot about is growing my email list because that just seems to be the one thing that every year I sit down and I write it on my list for my goal for the year and then at the end of the year to date it's just been one of those ones that I've gone that just didn't work it was you know I get all fired up at the beginning of the year all excited and um, then sort of through the year all the other things take over and growing that seems to to go to the bottom of the list and that's been one of the hugest things that I really have tried to sort of push this year and focus every week back on how can I grow this email list of mine because I know that there's that direct cor correlation between your email list and your audience and and your revenue so it's been something that I've been really keen to grow uh, as a way to be able to to reach more people as well so to showcase what I do and also to go back through what I have shared because as we know our reach on Instagram and our social media platforms that's not dictated by us so you know being able to you know get to an audience of a bigger bigger value you know every time that newsletter goes out as compared to the number of people who may or may not see your post depending on if you know Instagram's glitching on the day or if um you know anything like that so that's absolutely been the, the big goal yes you are you are talking to me in my language of love I love the email list it is hugely important but there's this mystique over like, well, how, how do I do it? You know, clearly you've been working on this, thinking about it for years. What have you tried to grow your email list so far? Things that I have tried have been um, along the lines of the offering. So that opt-in when people come to my platform and over the years that's changed. So initially it was a free quilt pattern. So you come along, sign up 
and I'll send you, you know, this, this free quilt pattern. And over the years I changed that quilt pattern a couple of times to refresh it and to um, make sure that that was always something new and exciting on, on that. And then in my sort of burst of things last year, I then changed that opt-in to a discount code. So, and I do sort of see some, I see people sort of coming through. I can directly see people using that as compared to the opt-in where with the quilt pattern, even though there were all the links for them to share that on social media, whether or not people were making that, I wasn't sure. But I can actually see those people who are then going to my shop uh, with that discount code and, and using that. So there are a couple of things that I've tried in the past, but I sort of seem to get to that point at the end of the year where that growth hasn't continued to sort of be on an upward trajectory. <laughs> um, right. To, yeah, so that's definitely one area that I'm, I have been looking at ways to, to increase that. So when it comes to growing your email list, you know, there's that catching people who are already coming to your website on their own, which is, it's great. You want to do that but it's, it's capped at the people that you're already capturing probably on social media. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where they're probably finding you. So again, that's, it's capped. So then the next level of reach would be where you are borrowing someone else's audience. So you're, you're capped at finding people without paying for ads, you know, that you're just throwing stuff out there and people will find it and be interested. That's the lowest number of reach that you're going to get, but you want to do that. And then, like I said, the next level is going to be being a guest on someone else's blog, having someone else share about your opt-in, where you will get a bigger pool and you're borrowing from their audience. And then the top, which is the most expensive and risky, and there's tips to making it work, is doing ads, where you are paying for, to have eyes see you who you don't have a reach for on your own, but like Facebook or Instagram has access to these people. And I, you are definitely at a point where I would consider Facebook ads, but what I would do first and things to consider for Facebook ads, start with free, do, I, I don't even start with, I love to do free things. So if you share a free pattern or let's say you make a, you love to teach. So if you created a free mini course talking about the history of quilting in Australia and you have along with it, like a block that you teach that would go with, I don't know something Australian that taps into your uniqueness of being Australian, which is going to be memorable for people. They're learning something for free and then they have this tangible takeaway and it's all for free in exchange for their email list. But not just that, they're building a relationship with you and they're going to feel connected because they would have this free mini course from you. Um, but if you can put that out to your audience first and see, try out some different graphics to advertise it, like, sh or a reel or a video. And whichever one gets the most likes and engagement, mm -hmm. that's the one you want to put money behind and run a Facebook ad for that. Right. Or if you have a free pattern, same thing, put out some photos. So I did a free gingham quilt pattern, which has brought in to date, gosh, we'll say 20,000 people to my email list. I don't even know at this point. Um, there's one photo in particular that for whatever reason, people love it. When I post it, when they see it, they're like, I need that. I need that. What fabric have you used? Da, 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 da. And so that's the one photo that I've put my money behind. And it's mm -hmm. just like hotcakes, you know, it just is great. But you want to do it free for first and see which one just resonates with which one is the most popular and seems to catch people's attention. And once you've done that on your own platform for free, then put in some Facebook ads and your list will grow. It just, the Facebook ads, and you're at a point in your business, have you done Facebook ads? I haven't. It's it's something that I have sort of never dabbled in and haven't sort of looked at who I would get to help me on that. Um, but definitely it's the type of thing that I would, would go, look, that is what I would need someone to help me on. And uh, yeah. I'm never afraid to get help from people who actually know how to do that rather than try to stumble through that myself. And I actually took a course and hired an Australian to help <laughs> me. Um, it's, oh my gosh, why can't I think of her name? Salome, Salome Shellac of Shine and Succeed. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes. But she's in Australia. Now the course is teaching you to do it on your own, but for a higher ticket price, you can hire her 
Her specialty is more if you have a course or something, she'll run those ads leading to the course. But for you, you're wanting to build your list. Yeah, you yeah. don't have this big ticket item. So her course might be a great place for you to sign up to learn how to run your own ads, you mm -hmm. know, or, or hire someone. I'm sure you could reach out and hire someone as well. But I think that will be, I, I don't even think that'll be huge for you. You've put in, you have an audience already that when people go and they're like, who is this? Whoa, this, this girl's a big deal. You know, that you have that credibility. Mm -hmm. You've got books you can share at the end of your little free thing. I'd have an upsell of like, if you enjoyed this, be sure to check out my book or my pattern or whatever, you know, and then you can earn money from that free Facebook ad. Um, but I would definitely, and then being a guest on people's blogs, but the Facebook ads, I feel like at this point for you and your business, that is definitely a route I would go and your list, right. just, it will grow. Those are some really um, proactive steps that I can take forward to, to be able to do that because it's sometimes just knowing where to start or what it is, is to pick to actually focus on how to make that next step because I, from what I can do, I've been doing what I think is all the right things and yet it's not converting the way I'd necessarily like it to. So it's great to be able to have some, some tangible things to be able to go away with and actually implement those because some of the other things that you had mentioned are things that I have been working on and been doing and, um, as you said, I just need to continue now to, to move that forward with, with something that's a bit more um, outside of my actual reach because... Yeah, definitely sort of, you know, putting to my audience and putting to, to my social media things like um, free patterns and all that are things that I have been doing through this year and, and I have seen that list grow this year already just in terms of um, promoting the newsletter and when it's coming out and um, having a free pattern attached to that each time which has changed. So all those little things and uh, also then reaching out to to um, someone to collaborate on with. So that's something that um, I've been working on as well. So all those things are things that I am doing, but just sometimes you get to that point where you feel like you're doing all the things and you're ticking all the boxes, but you're just not making that needle move. Yeah, you are ready for that next step. Like you've done those things long enough. And there's always another blog if you're a guest on another person's blog. But really you are at that point where like, to see the jump, it's time to, to invest in the next thing, mm -hmm. which then the sales page becomes a big, um, topic of like how, how to get people to convert, which, um, Shannon Brinkley, she's my business mentor. Mm -hmm. She runs some Facebook ads and I'm going to put a link in the show notes here as well. There is a link for Facebook where you can go and type in a person's name and see what Facebook ads they're running at this time. And it will show, it will pop up that, but you have to search by name. You have to, you can't, I don't know. I don't know if you can type in quilting a genre and see mm -hmm. what comes up, but Shannon Brinkley does an amazing job with her copy and her sales pages. Yeah. So she'd be a good one to go and look at her because you want to build credibility. You're a published author almost times three, you know, <laughs> you've got these pattern, a fabric line, fabric lines. So you, those are things you don't want to like focus on, but you want to definitely share that on your sales page that you're not just an average Joe, you, you're kind of a big deal, you know? <laughs> and so here's this free course from you that they mm -hmm. can take. And then to talk about the pain points, why would they want to take this course or what's in it for them? You know, this free lesson by a teacher who's very certified and has years of experience uh, learning something brand new. There's this whole part of the world where quilting has its own unique history and history is, and quilting go hand in hand. We quilters love our history and the mm -hmm. story behind it all. So to really touch on those points on your sales page yeah. or landing page, what have you. So what in your quilting, what brings you the, the biggest joy? Uh, definitely teaching and that works, you know, getting to meet people at workshops and just that face-to-face -face contact, whether it's, you know, actually teaching students or even just one of the biggest buzzes also was, you know, when I was able to attend Quilt Market and actually meet, you know, those people who were really um, my idols in terms of quilting and meet those people and um, meet those colleagues and meet people and make those connections. So, but uh, nothing, yeah, really lights me up more than being able to sort of walk into a classroom situation and workshop and 
and just having people work through your pattern at, and them at the end of the day having learned, you know, lots of tips and tricks and maybe not feeling as confident in the morning and then by the afternoon just having that block or having those pieces in front of them and realising that they made that and that they were able to get through it. And whilst it might have been, you know, a little in, little challenging, it definitely wasn't intimidating by any means. Okay. Have you, do you offer, and I should, well, yeah, just let me know. Do you offer any courses that are digital, like online virtual courses? That's also one of those things that has been on my list um, and something that I've been looking at and through, even through the pandemic and that I really didn't, I sort of was in that situation where, where should I make this whole conversion to teaching online and I just wasn't in um at that time I wasn't in that sort of mindset but it's definitely something that I have put um on my on my radar for you know I've I've bought some camera gear and I have done sort of you know I think even just getting more comfortable in front of the camera with things like reels and all those sorts of things just have pushed me that little bit you know step taking that one step more, more further forward to be able to start to put together a course. and But that's definitely on my list of things that um, I'd like to put together and, and uh, get happening and get working on. I am definitely going to encourage you and push you to do that. You are the perfect, I mean, Craftsy flew you to America to do this very thing. You know, you are very qualified. This is a natural next step for you. Um, I'll send you and I'll also put a link in the show notes Uh, Kajabi. It's the platform that I use to teach Mm -hmm. my courses. And I know like Bonnie Christine and Amy Porterfield and Jenna Kutcher and blah, blah, blah. They all use Kajabi. So I'll send you that link. And it also comes with, I do a free tutorial on how to get started, like creating your course on Kajabi. So I'll share that with you as well. But I also, if you are running Facebook ads, and this is also it definitely, if you're doing this free mini course on Australia, the history of Australian quilting plus this free quilt block, which is what I've just created in my <laughs> mind, by the way, I'm just <laughs> putting that out there to be whatever you want. Um, if you're doing that and you're building your email list, all of a sudden it's the perfect upsell to have, oh, here is my full time, you know, my bigger course, or here's a course you could offer so many different mm-hmm little courses you could teach your book and people have to buy your book in order to take the course or whatever it might be but um then you're you're getting an audience that is interested in you as a teacher and it's a natural fit to you're just the perfect candidate for having some online courses so I think that's take the leap it's it's scarier before you've done it Mm -hmm. don't worry about it being perfect the people I do know who have courses the biggest fear and hang up at first is like well how do I record this just use your phone. You know, it does not Mm -hmm. need to be super high tech or people want to just see what you are. And probably I wonder if being at Craftsy made it more intimidating because it was like the full. There was, yeah, it was, it was the whole production crew and, um, teleprompters and all that, the other things. (laughs) And, uh, I had to learn my script and all that in, in the lead up to, to um to landing there to to film but um yeah it, it's definitely something that I keep every day I'm like right I really just need to get my backside into gear on this and sit down and start to work out how I'm going to do this and and make it happen and and I know I will and um it's yeah at, um yeah looking forward to to doing it it's on my radar it's something I definitely want to get happening in in my business yeah I would say start with that free mini course. The bar is low, you know, it's a free mini. Granted, you don't want it to like be crap because you want people to be like, oh, shit, this is good. But, and if you haven't seen, I have a few free courses that I offer. There's a Canva course on how to use Canva and how to write quilt patterns using Canva. Mm -hmm. Check those out because you will see it's not like, I don't know how to say, it's not that it's not good quality, but it's just, you don't have to overthink it. You know, it can be easier than you think to create that, to put it out there. So I'll put the links in the show notes to that. And I'll just email you those. So you can go and watch through it and see what it looks like. So it's doable. You can do it. I can do it. And uh, sometimes just the whole technology side of it overwhelms me to the point where I just feel frozen and can't move forward. And, um, but yeah, just needing to, to move past my own roadblocks on, on working out how to, how to do that. Yeah. And I would think too, for you, a lot of my 
courses are more recording my computer screen where I'm showing how to do stuff on the mm-hmm. computer and yours would be more of a hands-on type of a thing. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Showing how to overhead shots and, um, yeah, machine shots and, uh, those, those sorts of things, a little more sort of hands in frame and, mm-hmm. Which I do, I'm trying to think, I can't remember what it's called, but there is a tripod I just bought, which I'll, I'll get that and put a link to that in the show notes too. But it's really great for coming and recording overhead mm-hmm. without having the base showing so that it's not in your way. Because I don't know about you, but the tripods that I have, if I put the phone down, you can see the base of the tripod in the video. Yeah. Sometimes the phone's heavier than the tripod. <laughs> yes. Top. Yes. It's so this up one's great. And all those things yep, to make sure yep. that it doesn't fall over. And this one's heavy weighted at the bottom. So I'll put a link to that because I, I cannot for life of me remember off the top of my head what it's called. But, um, but really, I mean, yeah, I I would love to hear back in a couple months. I mean, really, in a couple weeks, you can get this free course ready. So, but I'm not going to give you a deadline. That's up to you. <laughs> um, but but there, I mean, you you are primed. You have put in the work and the time. You have an audience, a great following. You are ready for this. You are more than ready to have uber success plus then you can reach out and be a virtual guest for all these quilt guilds around the world sharing things that you charge a couple hundred bucks for each visit then it's you know it's a pre-made presentation or what have you but it just opens the door to a lot more opportunities so yeah no definitely something that I uh, need to sit down make some time for and uh, make happen because yeah, I'm, I'm, once I say that it's going to happen, then I get get to it and uh, make sure that that then can be ticked off my list as well. Awesome. Well, yeah, let me know how it goes. And for our listeners who are newer entrepreneurs, what is, what are, what's an advice, a piece of advice that you would like to share with them that's really helped you? I think in terms of when you're starting out, you want to – start out and you want to see success so dream big but start small and by starting small I mean if you're looking to offer a quilt pattern it doesn't have to have 10 different sizes with five different versions all in different fabrics to be able to release the pattern so pair it back start with something that is maybe a little bit smaller to start with uh, in size so that it's not pages and pages of overwhelming content that is new to you and then new to your audience just so that you can hone that that skill in in writing and learning how to deliver a quilt pattern or a pattern that has a couple of really good elements that are all great rather than having it something that's really big and there are quite a few sort of bits and pieces in that that you aren't 100% you know aren't happy with to be um, heading out um, under your name. That is such good advice. How did you think of that? How did you know? So many people starting out try to just, well, everyone wants the queen king throw a baby and and in this version and this, and they're afraid to say no. They want to please people. So they try to do it all and then they please nobody. How did you know this was a thing? Um, I think through teaching, that's definitely been one of the things that so many times you see someone when they're starting out on their journey of whether it's quilting or sewing or garment making, any type of thing, and they pick this pattern because it looks glamorous and it's really, really way out of their depth. And basically most of the time they get stuck along the way, they won't finish it, or the quilt then is just way beyond what they sort of could cope with time-wise as well, gets shoved in the cupboard and they don't see success. And so those people then there hasn't been that success and that drive to want to to do the next thing. It's kind of, it's defeated them. So it's just something that I've seen time and time again with people who have picked up something that's maybe just a little bit beyond their skill level at this stage. Um, Not to say that they're definitely not going to get there to be able to do that, but just in terms of being, being, seeing success. So actually, you know, finish that garment that maybe isn't, you know, hasn't got every single, you know, pocket and button on it if it's a if it's a garment or if, you know, maybe not tackling the hardest quilt pattern that you can find as your your first one, but you know, looking at bite-sized pieces of something and working through that and getting success is definitely far more rewarding for anyone to want to do more and sew more and learn more 
uh, than just feeling defeated and and wanting to walk away and put it in a cupboard where it's never going to be seen again. Oh, that is just so beautiful and so wise. Mm-hmm. Yes, nothing breeds success like success. So exactly. Find success and then move on to the next and have success with that. And and it and it's a natural progression. You know, if you're climbing a ladder, you don't stop at the top rung or start there. You you got to climb your way and. I love that. Well, thank Mm -hmm. you so much for being here. If our listeners want to follow you, where can they find you? So most, most days I'm over on Instagram, uh, which is at Todd with a ribbon. And I also have my website, which is www.toddwitharibbon.com. And, um, yeah, generally they're the two places where you'll, you'll find me and, um, always so excited to, to meet new people and uh, so many people that I've met through, through those social media platforms and that have become people who I chat to regularly and who I can't wait to be able to travel to meet again and see again and catch up with. And, and those connections that, that you make with people, it's just that they do become, you know, part of your career changing moves. Those connections really do become, become so important. That is so true. So on that note, are you planning to go to any quilt shows or anything? I am teaching later in the year over in New Zealand at Quilt Symposium. So that's uh, five days of teaching. Uh, So that's really exciting. And then next year, I'm not sure what will sort of be on the cards um, as the book will, my next book will be released later this year. So look, I'm really hoping as as our, our borders have only just opened up, uh, so travel's only just back on the cards for us here in, in WA. But definitely sort of, you know, it was so exciting to see you at QuiltCon and, and I was so jealous of, of, you know, getting, you know, to be able to be with all your quilty friends and um, and that. So definitely I'm sort of hoping that next year those opportunities will be well and truly back on on, on the planner. I hope so. I would love to see you again. So it, it will happen. Just a matter of time. Oh, it so will. I'll look forward to that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Elizabeth. And um, yeah, some really practical advice that I can yeah sit down with and um, really get moving and um, make some make some headway into to getting some um, numbers back on onto that email list and just yeah some other words of advice that are that are really help me. Yeah, well, I'm excited to hear how it goes. So we'll, we'll be in touch. Thanks, Liz. Jemima, thank you so much for being here. It was such a pleasure. And how fun to have an Australian quilt pattern designer. I really do love that this huge world of quilting is made smaller through the internet and social media and that we get to be friends with people all over the world and to hear what that looks like to have a career as a quilt pattern designer living in Australia. So I'm excited to see how the growth of your business goes and what works well for you. And if you don't follow Jemima or haven't seen her, be sure to go and check her out on Instagram or her website at Tied with a Ribbon. Thank you so much for being here on the Craft a Career podcast. It is a pleasure as always. Next Friday, we have Jenny of Clover and Violet. And this is also a sort of business coaching call and hearing how her career has started and grown through the years. Jenny is such a sweetheart. You are just going to love getting to know her and hearing how her business has grown and the things we discussed to really help her move the needle and see the next growth that she's going to have. So be sure to join us next Friday with Jenny of Clover and Violet. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to the podcast so you get notified whenever there's a new podcast episode. So thank you so much for joining us this week. We'll see you here next Friday on the Craft to Career podcast. Have a wonderful week. Mm